the Integrated Electronics and Biofaces Laboratory, led by Director Shadi Daye, is a young, dedicated, and multidisciplinary research group with strong scientific and technical foundations, reducing to practice innovative solutions for the most pressing problems in energy and health-relevant electronic materials. The research covers studies in electronic and biointerface materials and devices from atomic and molecular scale processes to fully functional systems. The lab conceives and prototypes advanced neural probe devices through a rigorous cycle of design and testing in collaboration with neurosurgeons and with input from patients and caregivers. As of today, electrodes developed in the laboratory have been implanted in over 200 patients in high-profile clinical centers across the nation. Before translating the electrodes to the operating room, proof of concept and behavioral experiments in rodents are performed in the surgical equipment and electrophysiology test station, as well as in large animal models, such as pigs, in the Center for Future Surgery within the medical school. The lab has three recording stations, each for 1024 channels specialized in electrophysiological recording and analysis. The lab developed cortical arrays that bridge the gap between very high spatial resolution and very large cortical coverage, both of which are essential to decode brain function and disease. Here is a 1024 channel cortical grids currently used for intraoperative human brain and spinal cord mapping that have 100 times higher resolution compared to conventional clinical electrodes. Their thickness is only one-tenth of the human hair. The thin electrode can easily conform to the surface of the brain and spinal cord and it's compliant to the brain movements allowing the recording of high fidelity broadband brain activity without damaging the brain tissue or encountering reliability issues for the device contact with the brain. The IEBL group is in the process of pursuing FDA clearance for incorporating these electrodes in clinical practice worldwide. This video shows a patient with a motion capture glove moving their hand while the electrode implanted on their motor sensory cortex is recording the brain waves that are associated with hand and finger movements. Mapping neural connectivity in the spinal cord to develop new treatments and technologies for patients with spinal cord injury is also in the works. The lab made tactile devices that close the loop in robotic grippers using large-scale manufacturing processes typically practiced by the display manufacturing industry to develop zinc oxide thin film transistors with high piezoelectric response. These tactile sensors are tested and deployed for use in robotics, touchscreens, and to close the loop in prosthetics for grasping tasks. This setup facilitates the characterization of flexible zinc oxide tactile sensors. Every member of the lab makes use of the state-of-the-art clean room facility called Nano3 to develop world-class devices both in integrated electronics and biointerfaces. The system shown here is a metal organic chemical vapor deposition system called MOCVD used to grow high quality single crystal thin films such as gallium nitride, indium nitride, and aluminum nitride, including their ternary compounds, for example, indium gallium nitride. With this system, the group is extending the heteroepitaxy limits imposed by nature and beyond what has been achieved in the nitride field and continues to push the boundaries and solve challenges previously thought not to be possible. Day after day, the IEBL lab is inching closer to demonstrating terahertz electronics in the laboratory. My name is Dan Cleary. I'm a physician here at UC San Diego. I'm in the Department of Neurosurgery. I've been working with Professor Dyer for about six years now, um, developing advanced neural interface devices. So what makes his lab really special is that uh, he's truly doing bench to bedside work. So he designs uh, devices using the most advanced engineering materials and electronics uh, work. And then we're able to take those devices and test them in animals and see how well they actually work, revise the devices, and then subsequently take them into the OR, take them into the operating room and test them in humans as well. 
And this is really something special because it uh, represents true translational medicine and there's a pipeline uh, directly from devices to diagnostic and therapeutic advances. For more information, please visit eceu.ucsd.edu.